This is algebra 2 at trig. 2b.6, we're going to apply the remainder and factor theorems. So what we're going to have a little reminder about is how we would divide this linear polynomial into this quartic polynomial. One way that we can do it, because this is a first degree, we like to use synthetic. Use synthetic division. So x plus 7 equals 0. We have to make this have x equals. You need to know what the 0 is. So x equals negative 7 is the 0. That's the value we're going to use in our synthetic. So we use our negative 7. We use all the coefficients. Notice that all the degree values are there. 4, 3, 2, 1, and none. So we use our little synthetic bar. We drop down the 4 and multiply. Add them together. Negative 7 times 1. Add them together. and we get the answer of negative 43. So we're doing division. So in division, we notice that we're starting with x to the fourth, we're dividing by the first power, so now we're going to have x cubed. So this must be the coefficient for x cubed. Then we go in decreasing order plus x squared, minus 3x, plus 7, and negative 43 over x plus 7. That's how we use synthetic division. That's a bit of a review. So, what if when dividing polynomials, we get a remainder of zero? We didn't get a remainder of zero, but what if we got a remainder of zero? This means that there is no remainder and that it divides into it evenly. Like the number 8 divides into 24 evenly. That makes 8 a factor. That makes it a factor. So if it divides in there evenly, if there's a zero remainder, then the number, or the actually, the binomial is your factor. So we say that a polynomial f of x has a factor of x minus k if f of k is zero. And you can go the other way. If f of k is zero, then x minus k is a factor. That means it's a definition. It works both ways. If and only if works both directions. So we're going to come down here. We are going to factor. Be sure you follow the directions. Factor completely. So they're telling us what a factor is. This is a factor. That's very helpful. They don't have to tell us that, but it's very nice when they do. So they give us our polynomial, and here's this. Some of you might be saying, wait a minute, I thought we could factor this by grouping. This has four terms. What if I take that and try to use factor by grouping with it? That's the way we learned it yesterday. And we pull out the x squared, and we get 2x minus 11. Bring down my sign. 
factor out my 3. I get 3 times x, 3 times 12. So I get x squared plus 3, and my 2 factor, wait, they're not the same. They're not the same. If they're not the same, you can't use factor by grouping. So factor by grouping does not work. It doesn't always work. Just like some quadratics aren't factorable. It doesn't mean they don't have zeros. It just means you, you can't factor it using, in this case, you can't factor it using factor by grouping. So we need a different method. So we're going to use synthetic here. First, we have to say x minus 3 equals 0, x equals 3. You have to know what the 0 is. x equals 3 is your 0. You need to know what x equals. So 3. Then you use your coefficients. And you make your synthetic bar, you drop down the 2, be sure to drop it all the way down. You're thinking about what we're going to do next. You might not even have to copy me, you can do it yourself. But we'd multiply, add them together, and multiply, add them together, and multiply. Hey, perfect. I got a zero, so I put a little smiley face in my zero. And I make the note, we have a zero, because that's what we're looking for. So, x minus 3 is a factor. Because I got zero, I know x minus 3 is a factor. So I have x minus 3 as a factor. I also have what would be left over. It started out as a cubic, but when I divided it by a power of 1, I now have a quadratic. 2x squared minus 5x, minus 12. What do we do from here? You've got to be the thinker. X minus 3 is not changing. There's multiple ways we can do this, but if you want to use factor by grouping, you could say that you have negative 12, actually 24, 2 times 12 is 24, adds to be 5, that has to be 3 and negative 8, 2 times negative 12 is negative 24, that adds to be negative 5. 3 and negative 8 does that. So I have 2x squared plus 3x minus 8x minus 12. And I'm going to use factor by grouping to pull this one apart. And I notice inside my parentheses are exactly the same. That means factor by grouping worked. I knew factor by grouping would work because I made a table that verified that it should work. Okay. So I have x minus 4, 2x plus 3, and my x minus 3. Don't forget your x minus 3. You have to have all the factors.
Okay, you should be able to do this one now. You could pause the video and work on this one. The way we'll start it is to say x plus 1 equals 0. We get negative 1 as our 0. So we use our coefficients. And I get the number 0. That's what I wanted. That's what I expected. They told me it was a factor, so I was expecting to get 0. So x plus 1 is a factor. Now, the reason I needed to do this, I knew it was going to happen. The reason I needed to do this is I needed the other factor. I now have x plus 1, and I have x squared minus 7x plus 12. And that can be factored. These two terms have to both be x. These two terms have to multiply to be 12. Well, 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4, they all make 12. So which is the correct one to use? 3 and 4, because they would multiply to be positive 12 and add to be negative 7. When you do the outer and inner, you would get negative 7. So there are your factors. So now you could find the zeros, you could graph these, do lots of different things from here. So on this side, it talks about getting the zero. If they tell you what the zero is, then we know that k is going to be the zero. There's no sign changing needed. So with this polynomial, they're telling us what the zero is. And I'll make it clear right now, find the other zeros. It should tell you what to do. Down here, it told us to find the other zeros. Over here, it told us to factor. Factor completely. Here, we're going to find the other zeros. If we're given a zero of f of x, then we know the corresponding factors will divide evenly into f of x. We can use synthetic to find the quotient and then factor it. And then when we're asked to find the zeros, we can factor it and solve for them. So we know that negative 2 is the zero. So we're going to use negative 2. We don't change that sign. 1, 8, 5, and negative 14. And I get my little smiley face. I got zero. I expected to get zero because they told me it was zero. But what I needed was this other quadratic. That's why I had to still do it. I have a zero. So x plus 2 
is a factor. So I have x plus 2 is a factor, and I have x squared plus 6x minus 7. And I'm looking for the zero, so I want to know when does that equal zero. So this is going to get broken down. This is a quadratic, so it's going to get broken into two polynomials, two binomials to be more specific. X and X, 7 and 1, that multiplies to be 7, that adds to be 6. It's got to be a positive 7 and a negative 1. Then we would use the zero product property. Use the zero product property to find the zeros. Now since we have the factors, we can use the zero product property. So that's x plus 2 equals 0, x plus 7 equals 0, x minus 1 equals 0. So of course, we already knew this one. You got to say that that's the answer though. Don't, don't leave it out. Don't say we just have these answers over here. So those are your x-intercepts. You could graph this if you needed to. You know you're in behavior. Okay? You go ahead, pause the video, work through this one. So we know that 4 is the 0. So we use 4, 1, 1, negative 16, negative 16. Drop down my 1 and multiply. 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 And look at that. I got my smiley face. I got my 0. So x minus 4 is a factor. So I have x minus 4. I have x squared plus 5x plus 4. And that breaks into my two binomials. 4 and 1. Both would be positive. I'm going to look for the zeros of this. So I get x equals 4, x equals negative 4, and x equals negative 1. All right, last one. They're telling us that x minus 4 is a factor. But we're supposed to figure out what the polynomial exactly is. What's our missing term in this polynomial? So what do you think? Can you come up with a strategy? The math's really easy. But can you come up? What would have to be true? What would this number need to be for you to be able to complete the problem as usual? Think about that for a moment. Go ahead and try it. Pause the video. See if you can come up with what K would be. It doesn't have to be completely guess and check, but that might work. So if I have X minus four as a factor, I know that x has to equal 4. And I'm going to have coefficients of 1, negative 6, some k value. I don't even know what it is. 
and 12. So if I was doing my regular synthetic, I would drop down my 1, multiply to get 4, add to get negative 2, multiply to get negative 8, add, oh, I don't know what it adds to become. Okay, well, let's start on this side. If this is going to be a 0, I know that this has to be a 0, which made this negative 12 because together they had to add to become zero. So I know this has to be negative 12. So now I need to figure out what number times four is gonna give me a negative 12. Four times negative three gives me a negative 12. So I know this number has to be negative three. Now I need to figure out what K is. So I have k minus the 8 is going to equal to negative 3. When I group these together, I get negative 3. So I just solved my problem. If you think it too much in your head, a lot of times people mess that up. I get k equals 5. So now I know what my polynomial is. 